Next index of interest, the Case-Shiller Housing Price Index, which also coincidentally came out yesterday, yeah, uh, last week in the news. Now, the peak of our market occurred right here in June 2006. The actual number in June of 2006 for our index was 227.42. The index is based, it was set to 100, well, there's 100 on our index, in January of 2000. The index number that was released last week was 104.7. It's released for June. The index numbers run a little bit uh, behind. This is obviously in August. They run about a month and a half behind as they compile their data. So for comparison's sake, May of 2009, the index was 103.56. So we went from 103.56 up to 104.7. So we've seen an increase. And in fact, this is the first monthly increase in three years. So we've been declining for three years, as, as we're well aware of the housing crisis in Phoenix. Uh, we've had three years of decline. Here is our little bit of increase. This has been trumpeted all over the news as housing prices are jumping and this and that and the other. Well, we're going to look at the, First off, let's look at it in perspective of this decline. As we can see, it's a pretty small thing. So we'll see if further months were to show an increase, it might be exciting, or it could just be a slowdown in our decrease, a temporary bobble. We certainly need more data to have confidence. Percent increase in the last month. If last month's increase happened for a year, what would that percent increase be for an entire year? And what's the percent decrease in the last year? So I've given you for reference the number of June of 2008 was 153.19. And a home that cost 400000 at the peak right here at 227.42 on the index, how much would it cost today? So I suggest you hit pause and work these questions if possible and do your best effort and then we'll go over them together. Okay, after your pause now, we're looking at our answers. Percent increase in the last month. In the last month, the index ended at 104.7. It started at 103.56. So to answer that, we're going to find the difference. We'll take today's number, 104.7 minus 103.56, and we'll put it over the 103.56, the first number in time. So 104.7 minus 103.56, enter, divided by 103.56. And we get a decimal answer of 0 0.011008. Turn to percent, one, moving it two spots, we get 1.1%, we'll round off. Certainly more than the accuracy in the index anyway. So prices increased by 1.1%. Now what would happen if they increased at this rate for an entire year? Where would we expect to be in 12 months? Well, the increase, the effect of that on a price, price of a house, would be the following. You would multiply by 1.011. And the reason we, we're using 1.011, if we multiply by 0 0.011, that gives us the increase in the price. If this number were 1, we get our price again. So this is 101.1%. So it's 100% plus this answer, which gives us 100%. Our home would have its same price plus 1.1% more. Now that's for one month. Obviously, to go 12 months, you would repeat that multiplication each month 12 times. But that sounds uh, tedious. So what we would end up doing to do it more quickly is 1.011 to the 12th, to add 12 months of the same percent increase raised to the 12th power, and I get an answer of 1.1402, etc. Or basically, we can see from this number, one being it wouldn't change at all, it would increase 14.02%. We'll just round that to 14%. So a 1.1% increase in one month, while it sounds small, if it made it through a whole year, that's 14%. That's a sizable increase. There are a number of reasons why I'm willing to bet that does not happen over the next year. Our 8,000 tax credit for new home buyers is expiring in, in December 1st, and I believe that has set off a sort of a flurry of new home buyers. Interest rates are being held low by the Federal Reserve. That, those policies are supposed to be phased out by December, so we should see interest rates perhaps increasing a little bit after the winter along with a lessening of buying, and home buying is seasonal. We're in the height of home buying time in the middle of summer. 
winter is typically slower, and the foreclosure crisis is ongoing, which is a topic of a later discussion. So for a number of reasons, I do not believe we'll see this kind of increase. Percent decrease in the last year. June of 2008, we're at 153.19. Now we are at 104.7. So we should actually reverse this. It should be 104.7 minus 153, and we see a change Suppose it matters if I ask the question what the decrease is or what the increase is. It's a decrease, so I think of it as negative, but it, it could be, you could also logically answer the question with a positive number since I did ask the question as a decrease. But the, the total amount is 48.49, whichever we're going to use. I'm going to use negative since it's, it is going down. I put it over the earlier number in time, 153.19. We see that the average home has lost 31, approximately 31.6 percent of its value from a year ago. So a pretty traumatic drop if you bought a year ago. Okay, home that cost 400,000 at the peak would cost how much today? 400,000. That's dollars. June of 06. We want those to go away. We want dollars today. Our most, of course, recent number we can't actually do today, but the most recent number we have is June 2009. So we put that index number of 104.7 on top and the 227.42. And we can see we're going to have a fairly unhappy owner because this is, this is about half. 400,000 times 104.7 divided by 227.42 and the proud homeowner now has a home with a value scoot this up just a touch of 181,000 184,000 rather 152 and 67 proud cents in his home. A tremendous drop and you see why so many homes are going into foreclosure today. Thank you for working through this lecture. Best of luck on your homework.